Well, thank you everyone. My name is Jesse Villarreal from Texas Instruments. And Rod has graciously given me 12 minutes to go through everything that we talked about in the working group for the last year. So we're going to go pretty fast here. So I'm not going to cover every bullet point on the slides. I, I intentionally put more stuff on the slides uh, so that you guys can take a look at it. And I hope that this is a reference into the specification so you can get some ideas of what we're talking about here and then you can spend more time looking at the details in the spec. So the first off, kind of some of the high level objectives. Uh, what were we focusing on this last year for this version of the spec? Uh, Really, basically, the, um, the frameworking aspects, we really wanted to nail down and solidify the ease of use for the, the application programmers to the spec. And the, the kernels are certainly coming in the next uh, several months, as Neil has mentioned. But this, for this next draft, that we, or the next version, the 1.1 that came out this week, is mainly the frameworking features. Uh, we did pull in some computational ph photography use cases that didn't make it into 1.0. So we made sure that we brought those in in terms of kernels. Uh, and also additionally with the, the frameworking, adding control and flexibility. So let me jump right in. You've seen this slide, I think, earlier this morning. And, and I know that there's probably some confusion that was uh, associated with trying to understand there's two different modes of, of the axis for the objects. There's the map, there's the copy mode. Uh, and so this is one thing that we did target. And this will have implications if you have an existing application on 1.0. You may see a lot of the code changing because of this uh, every time you access an object. Uh, so what we've changed here is we've separated the two, uh, map mode and copy mode, into separate functions altogether. And so in the map mode, now we have uh, this idea of map image patch uh, or unmap image patch. And this is true for most of the objects, not just images. Uh, so most of it stays the same uh, in terms of the map and the unmap from the axis and the commit. But one thing that you notice that we've simplified here is many of the, the arguments on the unmap were, were not necessary because all that information was already there associated with the, the map. So we have an additional in red. You could see the map ID is returned uh, when you call the, the map image patch. And then so that when you do the unmap, you could just uh, send that same identifier to the unmap and it knows that it was associated with the particular map that you did before. So that should be a little bit easier to use. Hopefully you, you enjoy that. Uh, and then when you look at the copy function, there was no, really no need to have to access and then commit when you were just doing a copy. And so we, we narrowed this down basically just to a single function. So uh, you just you specify what direction you're copying in, if it's read only or write only, and that's how you can copy from the application to the OpenVX or vice versa. I'll skip this slide. Uh, we haven't talked about it yet today, and hopefully we'll get to it later today, but the idea of user kernels. Uh, there was some things that as implementers were starting to implement uh, the user kernels, they found that there was some redundancy in the way that we've specified it in 1.0. Uh, namely, you can see here uh, the mechanism by which you add a new kernel where you associate the different callbacks that you needed to populate. There used to be a, 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 an input validation function separate from the output validation function. Uh, we found that it was unnecessary to do these two. And in fact, it was re causing a lot of redundant code inside of these function callbacks. And so now there's a single validate function. And just to kind of show you uh, the results of this, it, in the next couple of slides you'll see we've highlighted kind of uh, an example of the absolute diff input validator and the output validator. And what the colors lines mean is basically redundant code, code, code that we can take away because of this improvement that we made to specifying a single validator and also passing the parameters uh, along uh, in the signature instead of having to query and get and set those parameters separately. So you can see basically between the input validator and the output validator functions, uh, roughly half of the code can be removed. This also impacts execution time. Okay, moving on to computational photography. Uh, so we have this example here and I'm not gonna go through this graph. Uh, I just wanted to point out this is an exposure fusion graph where you have two input uh, two different images perhaps taken at different exposures and you want to fuse those into a single image. Uh, so looking at the existing 1.0 spec, we had many of the components we need to do that except these red circles here. So we were missing the Laplacian pyramid and at the end the Laplacian reconstruct. And so those are two of the kernels that we've added into the spec for 1.1. The other thing to notice is all these orange circles. So we can do the multiplies and the adds, but if you notice the inputs and the outputs of these are all image pyramids. So you can do that certainly with 1.0, but there's a lot of overhead in terms of setting up the graph, right? So you would have to go query each image out, of, or I should say, 
get a reference for each image out of that pyramid and then create the node set for each of these images, inputs and outputs. And so I'll show you on the next slide. So if you look here, if you have two input pyramids that each perhaps have three different levels in the pyramid and you have your associated output pyramid, you would first have a function to query or to get level zero from the inputs and get level zero from the output and then you create your VX add node passing those different references to it. You'd have to do the same thing for the other levels as well. And so what we've added is this uh, kind of a helper function makes things a little bit simpler for the user interface. Uh, so we have this VX replicate node and it conceptually does what I just told you you can do manually. Now internally it may or may not do this. Uh, it's up to the implementation to figure out if it can do some optimizations. But uh, at least conceptually you can get the idea which is why we called it VX replicate node. And so if you kind of step through the code here, what's required to do something like this. Like I mentioned, you create your three pyramids and then you have to call get pyramid level on each of these pyramids and you pass level zero to get that first image level. Uh, and so now you've got the three references and you create your node. So you do this add node function. And instead of doing that in a for loop for however many levels you have, now we have this VX replicate node and that does that for you. Uh, so now that we have this functionality, this by the way can happen on any node. So it's not just the ones that uh, we enable this for the adds and the multiplies. Any node that you had, you can conceptually do this. And why not stop at pyramids? And so it kind of came up that there's other applications that would say, well, I don't necessarily want a pyramid object. I want an array of images or an array of arrays or a rate of lookup tables, right? And so we added the concept of this uh, VX object array. And it's very similar to the delay in how you construct it. Uh, so if you look at the code here, it's, uh, it's also similar to the pyramid. It's kind of got some things borrowed from both. And so we have the exemplar, just like we talked about with the delay object, where you say, okay, if I want an image array, well, then I'll create my image using the exemplar, uh, and then I'll create these different object arrays based on that exemplar with the different levels of the array as well. Uh, and then just like with the, uh, the image pyramid, you can get the object array items for each of those, set up the connections to the node, and replicate it as well. One thing I want to mention about this replicate function is you see this VX Boolean replicate. So these are basically for every parameter of the node that you're trying to replicate. You can say, do I want this parameter to replicate its index into the object, the, the greater object with, that it's connected to? So in this case, we're doing yes because we want zero and zero to be connected to zero in the output and vice the same for the ones and the twos. But if I change this and I say for that first parameter I'll say false, then you can see what we've essentially done is to say we're not going to replicate that first parameter across the different indices. We can have control and say, well, I just always want that uh, level zero of that particular image array to be connected to every single replicant. Okay? So you have controllability over whether or not you want to replicate different parameters across uh, the connections of this node. So that's cool. So I've already mentioned that we've added a few kernels, the, the first two being the Laplacian pyramid node and the Laplacian reconstruct node. We've also added a non-linear filter mode. So you can choose a mode of this being to get the median, the erosion, or the dilation. And it comes with a lot more programmability. I think what we've had before was typically three by threes. Uh, in terms of the, the structuring element size. So this one is fully programmable. You can choose uh, independent width, height, and the different uh, patterns. So that's kind of nice. In terms of the existing kernels that we have, uh, there's been some minor updates to add, for example, for the lookup table. Uh, we've added S16 support before it was only U8 support. Um, the threshold node before, although we had the attributes for true value and false value, uh, the specification was saying, well, the outputs are always 0 or 255. And now it's such that you can program what the outputs are. You can decide what is the true value and what is the false value for the output and use those uh, attributes. Uh, and then in the canny edge detector also did some clarifying about what the, the data types that can be used. Okay. So another thing that's very useful for a lot of people is the idea of targets. And I think Thierry mentioned earlier that we can now in 1.1 we have a standardized a function which is set node target. Um, so you can decide, given on the implementation that you have, 
uh, I want to set a particular node to execute on a particular target, a DSP or a hardware accelerator or a GPU. Now, not every application, not every implementation is going to have uh, these targets, and so we can't standardize what targets are going to be uh, programmed through this function. So you can specify through a vendor extension or through a string, which is also a vendor extension. So this part is portable in the aspect of that we can use the same function to specify targets, but the target you choose is not going to be portable. I think we also had in 1.0 the concept of a valid image region, although its semantics were not well defined. And so there's a, a whole new section in the 1.1 in the that goes to the detailed description of how uh, the semantics are defined for a valid image region. And just, just in case you don't know, basically if you have an undefined border mode, you, the question comes, well, what do you do with those pixels that are in this undefined border mode when you cascade through the graph? And I say you want to find the maximum value of the image. Well, if you've got garbage on the outside, you don't want to incorporate that in your calculation for the maximum value. And so this is just a definition of what to do with that. Uh, we've added the state machine for the graph, and so uh, it, before it wasn't very clear, very specified, so we've added the VX graph state, and you can query what state of that your graph is in. And, uh, you know, we've added some various hints and, and directives here. You can look at that in the spec. One thing I want to note is in, in case of the enumerations, especially the attribute enumerations, um, is if you're using uh, an application with 1.0 right now, a lot of these enumerations have actually changed. And the reasoning for that is because the, the, the identifiers have gotten so long that if you're wanting to try to pass mistress C, one of the uh, rules in mistress C is that the first 31 characters of identifiers should be unique. And so we've removed a lot of, uh, we've shortened a lot of the, uh, the, the attributes. Uh, and, and I think the one that's affected the most is the, the one that has attribute in it. So the attribute word has been removed. And these last three slides I'm not going to go through, but this is basically uh, a summary based on uh, categories of everything that's changed from the first spec. 1.0 to, to, the, to the spec now, 1.1. And so I'm at 12.2 minutes. All right, I have a few, questions, a few minutes for questions if you want. Do you want to mention about the VX compatibility? Did I have it in here? You don't have it there, but if you mention it, it scares people. Yeah, yeah, I didn't mean to scare anybody. So I thought I had it in here, but you're right, I don't see it. Uh, we do have a head, uh, we have shipping with the spec a header file VX compatibility. So all these things that I said we, we removed the access, the commit, you know, the the add kernel, these enumerations, uh, we we put all of those into this compatibility header file so that existing implementations, uh, as they're making the change, they can still uh, have this compatibility header file so that applications uh, may not have to change right away as well. It's kind of a deprecation feature. Go to the slide that shows the convolution changes. Which, uh, sorry? In the summary, there was something about convolution. Oh, OK. Which one in this case? Oh, I'm sorry. OK, which one are you referring to? I was just wanted to see what the convolution was under off. Oh, right. So if you'll notice, a lot of these objects have this uh, VX um, access and VX commit, and they were changed to the uh, map on map copy. Uh, the other idea, and I skipped a slide that, that talked about this one, is uh, before there was read and write, and we've combined those to a single copy where you can define if it's read only or write only. So that functionality gets clubbed into one function. Yes? Is anybody implemented 1.1? If they have, they haven't submitted a conformance test for it because we don't have conformance tests available yet. So they may be waiting for us. <laughs> But uh, yeah, not, not that it's been announced publicly. But this just was released this last week in terms of the specification. So it's going to take some time for the conformance test to come out here in the next uh, middle, middle of this year uh, that the, test, the, the implementers can test against. OK, thanks.